My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today we continue in this first week of ordinary time. But Lord, we know it's not ordinary. Since you came into this world, we still have that feeling of Christmas in us that when you became incarnate in our world, things have never been ordinary. We see that these days of the Lord, the Ani Domini, they are days and years of mercy. Lord, you came to us, as it were, from a great distance so that we might know your love close up and to know your mercy and to love you back. Today's liturgy offers us a selection from Mark. A leper came to him, kneeling down, begged him, and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he, Jesus, stretched out his hand, touched the leper, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. Then he said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be a proof to them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. Jesus, you were passing by, and the leper came to meet you. From living in the outskirts of the village, there because of ritual impurity, there because of deep illness of leprosy, he bravely enters into the village, hearing rumor of you, this wondrous rabbi. People would not like this. The rules are clear. You have to stay away. And we, family, friends, people moved by pity, people with means, and people with mercy, will leave you food and necessities for you within reach. You have to stay there. Why are you encroaching? Why are you entering the village? Why are you bringing danger? Should we or must we drive you out? Courage. God, you moved him with grace. Courage to overcome the social and physical threats. To meet you, Jesus. Jesus meets the leper. Respectfully, the beggar kneels down, begging. If you wish, you can make me clean. If you want to. O oh Lord, and I know you want to, does this leper know that deeply? You want to. You want to ease our pain, our horror, our loneliness. Yes, you want to ease our sin and distance. Yes, even more so, to close the distance of relation of love. It is a beautiful gospel passage, but what is this for you and I, dear listener, as we ask you, dear Jesus, what do you want here? You want me just to enjoy this scene, or may I too overcome the distance and follow the leper to you? Will I know that it's really sin and the loneliness that comes from it, the distance from you that happens then from my heart? Will I know to go to you, Jesus, like this leper did? For you are rich in mercy, Moved with pity, as the gospel scene tells about you, you stretch out your hand, moved with pity. This is a simple description, but how much is heartfully held here? Not just physically, not just human emotion. It is you, Lord God incarnate, you, Jesus, who are moved, you who have pity, and you stretch out your sacred hand from a far greater distance than all the universe, the incarnation is the path of this pity of yours, Jesus. And then, 
unbelievably, the touch. This is the big part of the close-up, that you would touch. When was the last time that someone, other than someone in the leper colony, has touched this leper? Someone who was clean, when was the last time? Someone who loved and not feared to be able to touch you with affection. When you who are ritually impure, you who need healing, we do not know. We do know, Jesus, that mankind in general has waited untold ages. This leper has waited, and can I say I have felt this distance? Can I say I have waited and longed? I so often am this leper, and not you too, dear listener. We feel the weight, the guilt of our sin. How do we move forward? This author says, the first step is to take responsibility and name the mistake. He says, I remember a remarkable moment when I was in a poetry class at Yale University. Our teacher, Harold Bloom, who was at the time an august and esteemed older professor, was in the middle of talking about a heart crane poem when he paused and told us in a moment of extreme vulnerability that he couldn't remember a single moment in his life that he hadn't felt guilty, but he couldn't figure out why. So often this is the case. We crash around, breaking all our toys, acting thoughtlessly, speaking crudely, making a mess, and then cannot figure out why we feel so bad. It's impossible to forgive what we do not identify and name. It's impossible to ask for forgiveness correctly when we don't know what it is by word. Once responsibility is taken, it's important to feel the guilt and acknowledge that it is appropriate to feel bad. Allow the guilt to motivate you into making a confession and forming an intention to change, an intention to, with courage, go to Jesus, fall on your knees, and ask him, If you wish, Lord, you can make me clean. And then even then, a part perhaps many of us struggle the most is, once confessed, let us forget about the guilt, let it go. We have to forgive ourselves and not be ashamed. The sin, it isn't you or me anymore. If amends need to be made, justice and charity, they should be made joyfully. Yes, mistakes have been made, sins committed, but they're just that. Mistakes and sins, every day is a new opportunity. Allow yourself to live it, forgiven and free. We are no longer in our sin. Your touch, Lord Jesus, after your words, the leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. The leper is set free. In an airplane, when we travel, there's a, a long waited time till ding, you hear the announcement. The captain has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign. You are now free to move about the cabin. And there was an ad campaign by one of the airlines. Ding, you are now free to move about the country. <laughs> well, we are free after confession. We are free after confessing our sin, doing our penance, following the grace as this leper is set free. One can surmise with the faith that he expressed that this occurred to him as well. Just like with that paralyzed man, before you cured him, Lord, you made sure he was free of the greater, his sin. There you are, Jesus. You always give better. You always give more. More than we ask. More than we think we even need. You give even more yourself. You cancel the distance. You restore the communion. We are, then again, face to face, heart to heart, close up. We cannot be... S Does this scene end? Lord, you tell him not to speak about it. But really, the leper cannot keep silent. Really meeting you, Lord, close up brings joy, grace that must be shared with others. If I've really met you, Jesus, 
Do I remain at a distance, or do not I wish others to meet you close up? Like Peter and John, we must also say, we cannot help but speak of what we have seen, what we have heard, and what we have touched close up. Mary, you are a mother, and so often when we go to Jesus, it's at your prompting the grace that you win for us by your intercession. Help us, too, to make this encounter with your son Jesus close up and to help us when we bring others to do the same. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help for putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.